Welcome, everyone, to the Q&A session for our upcoming course, Qigong to Renew and Rejuvenate Whole Body Health, the seven-week journey to dis discover the Zhang Fu Gong form of Qigong to boost energy and release stress for a balanced, joyful life. I'm Lisa Bunnies, and I'm always happy to host Q&A conversations with Daisy Lee for the Shift Network, where we'll explore Daisy Lee's teachings and address questions about her upcoming seven-week course. Again, that's called Qigong to Renew and Rejuvenate Whole Body Health, and it begins Monday, March 30th. And a little later, I'll explain how you can participate in the course, even if you can't attend the live sessions, but first, I want to introduce our guest. Daisy Lee is a respected leader in the Qigong world with more than 20 years of teaching experience. She's certified as a level three advanced Qigong instructor and clinical practitioner by the National Qigong Association of America. Past board member of the International Qigong Science Association in Beijing, she lectures and conducts workshops and instructor trainings internationally with a specialty in women's health. Her signature program, Radiant Lotus Qigong is now taught in 13 countries. Her accompanying DVD series, Beginner Qigong for Women 1 and 2, and Qigong for Women became bestsellers within the first month of their release. And in just a few minutes, we're going to open up for your questions. But first, I want to welcome Daisy, who's going to begin our time together by leading us in an opening movement meditation. Welcome, Daisy. It's so great to see you today. Great to see you too, Lisa, and hello everyone. I'm happy to be back with you, Lisa, and uh, to share uh, all these practices, especially the Zhang Fu Gong practice that we're going to be uh, going through together in these next seven weeks. I um, have a, a movement called sifting that I'd like to share. I'm going to just step back a little so you can see my hands as well. And well, just follow me. The palms first begin by feeling the earth and fingertips face each other. We come up through the midline of the body up to the heart and lungs. Turn the hands to slightly face the body and then exhale as we come down. Okay, and this will help to relax and bring peace to the body. It sifts through the key energy centers, all the processing organs in the front panel of the body. And so it's a moving meditation, inhaling up, turning at the top, exhaling. Just allow the legs and knees to relax, inhaling up, turn and exhale. We sift through the Wei Qi field of the body as the field outside the protective Qi of the body. And this helps us come into resonance, peaceful resonance, harmonious resonance with our true nature. And when we're at peace and when we're calm, the body can heal. But if we're in a panic, of course, that throws a lot of cortisol into the body and forces us, forces us into a flight, fight or flight mode. So we're just sifting through the torso, the main processing organs, the zong fu, what we call the zong are the yin organs and the function, more importantly, the function of those organs, and the fu, which are the yang organs, and the function of those organs. So when they're working in harmony, they're able to help you detox and rejuvenate, renew a lot easier. So inhaling up as you come up through the midline, Turn, slow, gentle, deep exhale. Just follow the hands down in time with the breath. One more. Inhale up. And exhale down. 
clear, allow the earth to support you. Crisscross the palms one over the other. Come back to the lower Dantian. Okay. So I just wanted to get us started with a simple moving meditation. Uh, we often use movement with our, our meditations because it's often easier to follow this meditative practice with movement than it is to do a seated meditation. And that's because the monkey mind is always grabbing for more information. Emotions may uh, have, you know, become stirred up and um, things are awry in the world at this time. And so when we're able to bring calm and peace to the body through a moving meditation, then everything comes into greater stillness. And it allows the energy of the body to go where it needs to go. So this is the, the opportunity and the beauty of Zhang Fu Gong and all forms of Qigong, and especially this style and this form. So I hope that was helpful to bring you into coherence with uh, the peaceful inner part of yourself that might be hiding at this time, sometimes when uh, the world is in chaos as it uh, appears to be right now. Uh, it's also an opportunity to go inwards and to find that stillness. And even if in the moment you don't feel like you can find it, um, and it's a struggle because you're cooped up, cooped up inside, um, and there's chaos within the home as well with tight spaces and uh, so much that's happening. And so to always come back into center and to go in back to the heart, I feel is one of the most important things, as well as optimizing the function of all your uh, processing, key processing organs. Okay, so uh, I'd be very happy to answer questions that you might have about uh, how to cleanse and clear, uh, how to use Zhang Fu Gong to support your continued journey in Qigong. So. Thank you, Lisa, for uh, welcoming me again <laughs> to, to Shift Network and what we're going to be sharing today. Right. Uh, yeah, yeah. Thank you, Daisy. That was, I think, a, really a great way to start us out here. Um, we have the rest of our time together to dive into our viewers' questions for Daisy as we prepare for her upcoming course. Again, that's called Qigong to Renew and Rejuvenate Whole Body Health. And again, it begins Monday, March 30th. And if you want to check out the website and learn more about the seven-week course, you can visit HealingChiEnergy.com. And Chi is spelled, in this case, Q-I. So it's HealingChiEnergy.com. And that's where you'll see the full description. So let's go ahead and get started with some questions. If you have a question for Daisy, go ahead and type it in, and I'll be happy to read them aloud. And in the meantime, we've already gathered some questions. Uh, so let's go ahead and start with a couple of foundational ones here. We've got Lori asking, uh, I've never taken a Qigong class before. Is this course that you're, in this course that you're offering, will I also learn the basics of Qigong, or would I benefit from taking a beginner course first? Um, Lori, you can begin with Zhang Fu Gong. I'll be going through, you know, really from the beginning. Uh, um, anyone can take this course and benefit. Uh, as you see, or hopefully experienced even in this uh, initial movement, it's simple enough that and slow enough that you can capture the information and there will be actually loads of information um, as, as I'm teaching each week. So uh, the questions will be answered also in the last half hour of each program. Um, and we're going live all the way through. So I'll be indoors with everyone, um, not like the, the previous program where I brought people um, outdoors into the, the you know, beautiful areas of Puerto Rico. Um, so it's not a problem to begin at this at this stage with Zhang Fu Gong. Okay, that's good to know. Thank you. Uh, so you've sort of sort of addressed this just a little bit, but Michelle wants to know what does Zhang Fu mean, and how is this specific program different from your previous Shift Network courses? Okay, well, Zhang actually means Yin organs. And so that includes the heart, 
the lungs, the kidneys, liver, and the spleen. Yes. So those are the, the zong or the yin organs and their function. And the fu are the what we call the yang organs. And together they support each other for optimum function. When we're, when we're able to move energy through these organs, which are all um, in the thorax, in the, the main part of the body, uh, when we can help with taking in the nutrition from the foods uh, or the air or the drinks that we imbibe, um, and we're able to help in the processing of what we take in, we can transform the energy into chi in the body so that it can be utilized to protect the, the field of the, the physical body as well as the way chi field starts to expand and um, have more vitality. So the, the fu organs are the stomach, the small intestine, large intestine, the bladder, and the gallbladder. So they partner off um, together, you know, to support optimum function. And uh, when you come into the program, you'll learn more specifically about what each pair does, uh, how they hold hands and, uh, you know, merrily or sometimes uh, not if they have some stagnation that needs to be uh, released. And so one of the, I think, very important aspects of Zhang Fu Gong is that a lot of, especially now, a lot of emotions an emotional stagnation or uh, upheaval in the body is happening. And it's, it's really easy to, uh, you could say, go into the negative aspects of the emotion because we're not in control. We don't have control over the situation that is happening globally. Um, we're observing very carefully, you know, how to respond to crisis um, without panicking because the panic only takes away energy from, from all our organs. And so that optimum function can start to you know, degrade because of the intense emotions that we're going through. Now, of course, it, it doesn't mean that we don't feel these things. Um, we have to acknowledge where we are and, and what we're feeling and sensing in our bodies. And from there, you bring in the awareness, the, the Zhang Fu organs, the Zhang Fu Qigong to support the release of um, high, you could say jagged, uh, intense emotions that might get the better of you and, uh, and make you more sick um, or, or imbalance you when you most need this kind of balance. Um, and so the, the opportunity is to learn uh, a way of managing the emotions as well as strengthening the body and the, the function of the organs. So everything goes hand in hand. Zhang Fu, is, uh, Zhang Fu Gong is more particular about optimization of the function of the processing organs. And uh, there's an emotional component to it, just as there was for my women's Qigong, which is a, a huge focus in women's Qigong because we contain a lot of energy in the, the middle Zhao or the middle Dantian. And that's because women have more of a tendency to hold the emotions and feelings inside. And if it's not expressed, then it um, deepens further into the tissues. And, and that, um, that can be, that can have an, a negative impact on the body and the function of the organs. And so with Zhang Fu Gong, we're taking care of all of the organs in its entirety. And that's why it's so helpful for, uh, it's a, a good system for also men to learn. And so whether you're man or woman, uh, whether you're young or elderly, and that's why uh, with Lori, I was saying earlier that for beginners, uh, whether you're starting out or whether you're advanced, this is a, a very stabilizing practice. Uh, it can be done seated if you have any kind of limitation with movement. Um, but if you have further 
agility, you can always enhance that by uh, sometimes going a little bit deeper into the movement. But uh, I'll provide, you know, some safety for you guidelines as we go along when, uh, when I'm teaching the actual program. Okay, so hopefully that is helpful and, uh, you know, to your question and, and uh, we'll see who has another question. Okay, <laughs> great. Thank you. And this is so timely. <laughs> it's just perfect timing for this. Uh, now, you did uh, begin to address this earlier when you were talking about the, the movement meditation, about how the monkey mind gets in the way. But let's t- take that just a little deeper here. Diana says, I have ADHD. I would love to practice Qigong because I can see the benefits just from watching it. The problem is I'm so antsy that it's difficult to move so slow. Only, and it's hard to create a daily practice because I can't keep my attention focused long enough to build up good habits like this. Are there Qigong mm-hmm. practices that can help me focus so I can do this effectively? Well, uh, that was from Diane. So mm-hmm. let's let's say that because one of the the great things about Qigong is how you synchronize your breath with the movement. So if at the beginning you can't slow the breath down, I I would say this is to to do a moving meditation is going to be much easier than the seated meditation because to sit still when you have a monkey mind in ADHD um, is going to be nearly impossible. So even if you do it quicker and your breath is quicker at the beginning, Time it to the best of your ability with the movement. And over time, what happens is the movements, as you slow down your breath, the movements start to slow down. As the movements slow down, the breath starts to coordinate. So it's the coordination of these two, the movement with the breath, that starts to bring the body into the relaxation response, brings it into homeostasis, so that there is peace and balance in the body. And you might surprise yourself that over time, you're going to start moving slower. You're going to pause more often before you say something that you may regret. (laughs) You may uh, take those little mini pauses in between the activities of the day that might be um, that previously might have consumed all all your time and energy. So it's a cultivation. Um, and that is very key. The gong, when we say qi gong, it's energy cultivation. And cultivation doesn't happen overnight. Cultivation takes time and it takes practice. And that's why qi gong, uh, when it's done on a regular basis, which means hopefully over time, we might do once a week together, but I'm hoping that when you go home or when you are at home, uh, that you continue your practice, whatever you learned in that week, continue. And uh, even if it's a portion of that time that we have together, you don't have to do the whole thing, but you grow your practice over time. And that is how you start to calm the body, calm the, calm the breath, uh, calm the, the mental activity that's causing the emotional stress in the body. If you can't slow the mind down, how will the body catch up? Yeah. And so take that time, give yourself that gift of time. We have it now. Um, many of us are in lockdown. So why not give yourself that opportunity to slow everything down and honor the time that you have rather than thinking of it as a a punishment or uh, something to fight against. There's nothing to fight against. All we have is this time together. And so come back home to yourself. Okay. Thank Thank you for that question. Now, we've got a question here from Karen, uh, who is a medic treating uh, treating COVID patients in the ER. And she's wondering, can you please share a calming Qigong technique that we healers can use in the field? 
Mm, a beautiful question. Thank you, Karen. And thank you so much for what you're doing in the field. Uh, it means so much to all of us because you're, you're putting yourself in a position of being in direct contact. Uh, and we can't thank you enough for, you know, that sacrifice. Um, the movement that I shared with you earlier called sifting, um, there's a larger version of that uh, called showering chi. I've put it on my Facebook post. Uh, you can see it. I shot it in, uh, in Puerto Rico. But let me step back and see if I can share this with you even now. So uh, if you don't have a chance to connect on, onto my page, then at least you'll see it here. Okay. Okay. This movement, um, Karen, and everyone is called Showering Chi. The feet, uh, I'll just tell you so you can see closer what my hands are doing. The feet are about uh, hip width or shoulder width apart if you're a man, hip width if you're a woman. And so roll the shoulders back and down. It doesn't take long, this movement. The palms are facing each other. Laogong point to Laogong point, which is a pericardium point. And because you're a healer, you're always working with the heart energy, so this will make more sense. We open the palms slowly to face the earth. We rise up the energy of the earth. Right? At the shoulder height, turn the palms up. Float the arms down, relax the shoulders. Now inhale. The yang chi from above, from the sky. And we feed it through, through the top of the head. Scan down, clearing the auric field or the wei chi field outside the body. Allow the hands to do the work. Sift through the midline back to the earth. So it's a little bit similar to what you just learned with the sifting through the front panel of the body, but this one envelops the whole body. Inhale and open. Long, slow inhale to calm the body and breath. Turn, exhale. It's like you have the whole world in your hands. Yeah, lift the chi up, lift the energy up. And we call it showering chi for a reason. We're showering through the light that emanates from the body, clearing the field from head to toes, all the way through. So even though the hands have gone as far as they can, the mind continues out through the feet and reconnects to the earth. I'll do one more time and I'll come back. Hopefully this will help you, Karen, and all those that are supporting us. Inhale the earth's nurturing energy. Turn, palms up, exhale. Inhale the whole sky. Bring in the light from above. Feed it through and wash through the body. Clearing the mind, clearing the throat, clearing the heart, clearing the lungs all the internal organs, clearing out anxiety and fear, grounding back to the earth. Disperse, allow the earth to support you. Come back home to the center of the body, crisscross the palms. Doesn't matter which hand, come back into the lower dantian and the center of the body. Okay, so, that's for you, Karen, and that's for all those that are here, uh, but especially those that are doing the, the really hard work of uh, being in the field to support those that have this coronavirus uh, and are going through, you know, deep challenges even to keep themselves safe. Yeah, so I hope that you find that useful. Thank you, Karen. Thank you, Lisa. 
Thank you, Daisy. And yes, thank you, Karen, for bringing up that uh, incredibly important question. So uh, thank you, Daisy, for sharing that. Uh, This question came in while you were performing uh, the Showering Chi. Doreen says, I feel pain and stiffness in my shoulders that I didn't realize I have as I raise my arms doing the practices. Can I still do this if I can only raise my arms a bit? And will regular Qigong practice help free up this pain? Definitely, Doreen. The, sometimes if we haven't done uh, or used a part of the body that we haven't used in a long time in this way, um, you're, you're going to actually start the process of giving new information to the shoulders and neck, uh, the body that, and areas of the body that haven't received these signals before. And so function will start to improve. Mobility and agility will start to improve as you practice. Um, What is important, and I'm glad that you mentioned this, Doreen, is not to push beyond your body's limitations, present limitations, because later on, as you increase your mobility, you will find that you can go further probably than you thought before or further than you have in the past. So in this type of movement, even as uh, um, you know, simple as the, the, this movement is for some people, you can just do a small, as if you're doing it in a teacup, as one of my uh, dear friends, uh, Arthur Rosenfeld, used to say, practice as if you're in a teacup. So you might have limited space, but you, you can't go up then just to here. Maybe it's just at the neck level and just slowly float the arms down. So it doesn't have to be a big expansive movement. What is more important is that you connect with the energy of the movement and you rinse through. So small is fine. Uh, Over time, it doesn't always mean that large is big or better. Uh, That might be an American way of thinking. Bigger is better. Uh, That's why they supersize everything. (laughs) But in this instance, you know, start small, go at your own pace, and the body will start to open up. The energy starts to open up and the joints start to open up as well. So thank you for that question, Doreen. All right, thank you for that answer. Uh, if you're just joining us, we're here with Daisy Lee, learning about her upcoming course, Qigong to Renew and Rejuvenate Whole Body Health, which begins Monday, March 30th. And you can log on to HealingQiEnergy.com for all the details and to register. And that is Qi spelled Q-I in this case. So let's go ahead and get back into the questions. Uh, we've actually we've got a few people asking about uh, not so much working as a healer uh, with people who are coming in with with coronavirus, but uh, if you if you don't have it and you would like to strengthen your immune system, or if you have discovered that you do have it, what sort of immune boosting uh, movements can you offer? Uh, Lisa, you know every. Every aspect, I believe, in Qigong is going to be immune boosting. Um, the Zhang Fu is, you know, very particular to, you know, sifting through and empowering the organ's function. Uh, and that's how we get good health is that you're, you're learning also through these seven weeks. You'll also learn about foods that can support immunity. Um, because food is, you know, very important uh, amidst the, these beautiful movements. There's also the consideration that we, uh, we now have time to make a decent meal at home. And so um, cooking and, you know, little exercises, even if you don't have uh, a huge strong immunity at this time, one of the quickest things that you can do I'm not sure I can actually do it properly here, but the thymus gland, where the immune cells emanate from uh, behind the thymus plate, uh, be, sorry, behind the, the sternum is the, the thymus gland. You can tap that. And since I have my microphone here, I won't do it, but you can tap the thymus gland for about a minute or rub this area for about a minute and do it a few times throughout the day. You can also tap the kidneys, and um, I will be sharing that with you when we're, when we're doing our program together. But 
It's that simple. Sometimes it's the simple things that you remember to do each day. Uh, I think it's also worth mentioning that, you know, we're, we're talking about the emotional equivalents that live in each of the organs, organ sets. And, um, you know, if you, if you go down the rabbit hole of emotions and buy into the fear and panic, um, we have what we have. And it's a, re it's a reality and it's something that we have to manage. So rather than going into those states, feel it, acknowledge it, and then we have to look at solutions. And that's how I work, at least. Um, and what I think is important to mention is that if you go down that path, your immune system and your immune cells drop. If you, for four days, focus on what you're grateful for and repeat it and feel it in your body what you're grateful for and repeat that message to the body your immunoglobin a can actually rise your immune cells can increase by 50 percent and i feel that that's a really relevant and very important piece of information that um, in this time of such distress around the world within our own families on a micro level worldwide uh, on a, a macrocosmic level that we have to see how we can help each other stay up and consider the things that you're doing even if it's staying home to protect other lives even if you're doing qigong to boost your own immune system all these little things become big things in the bigger, larger picture. And so that's why it's so important that we acknowledge, first of all, where we're at, how we're feeling, and then set about managing the energy that is present with us. And so boost the immune system, tap the thymus gland, tap the kidneys, uh, you know, modify the thoughts and transform those thoughts. Um, one friend of mine, a logger in BC, used to say, grab an attitude. <laughs> and I, I like that. Um, we can grab an attitude and take, take uh, you know, stay with the positive as much as possible so that we focus on what we can do and let go of the rest because the things that we can't control, we can't control but we can at least manage ourselves and find that inner balance so that it becomes physical balance, emotional balance, mental, uh, you know, spiritual balance over time. Okay, so I hope that's helpful. Yeah, thanks for that question. Yeah, thank you. Uh, now we've got a lot of people asking about individual organs and uh, what can uh, they do specifically. And obviously you'll be teaching that throughout the course, but we've got a really large number of people asking specifically about the liver. And I know you did share a movement in your time with Stephen Dynan. Uh, so perhaps they missed that, but uh, there's somebody here asking, is it okay to do this if you have non-alcoholic fatty liver? And then other people are just asking about general fatty liver. Okay. Yes, definitely. Uh, the, the liver cleansing movement is good for everyone. Um, what you're essentially doing is clearing the field outside the liver. So there's the, the physical organ on your right side. And then there's the field outside that emanates. If you are able to remove some of the static, it just calms down. So the pressure isn't pushing up upwards to the liver so that you have a high blood pressure or, uh, you know, something even more extreme. So the opportunity is to continuously clear the field. And so what we're doing is all the static or all the congestion that's in the liver, the, the emotion of anger can heighten this pressing up, the stagnation that's in the liver. Um, whether it's a fatty liver or any other kind of liver imbalance, 
uh, hepatitis or jaundice or, um, you know, you're on medications, you know, a, a load of medications or, um, you know, you're feeling overwhelmed and you feel like you need a drink. And so the body starts to load up and not be able to keep up with breaking down the toxins. And so this doesn't solve everything. I don't want you to make the mistake of thinking that this one movement is going to be like the fix all of your liver, but it will help to clear the field so that there's greater ease. And so the medicines you do take or the water that you do drink is going to be more supportive than it was previously. Yeah, uh, which reminds me, uh, because I mentioned this on my my uh, my Facebook page, I, I don't know who is out there, so I feel like I should also mention it here, that if you want to support your organs function, especially during this time, uh, be mindful to drink more hot liquids, whether it's hot tea, um, you know, herbal teas, even if it's caffeinated, it doesn't matter, but the, the key is the hot liquids. Um, and so drink that often throughout the day, maybe every half hour or so, take a, a, a sip of, uh, I have here my thermos of hot liquids and, and tea. Um, and do that throughout the day so that you lubricate the spaces in between, you lubricate the cells, but you lubricate the organs and the interstitial fluids that help to clear and detox the body. Yeah. So it's not enough just to drink tap water. <laughs> you need to boil it. Uh, best is if you filter it, uh, have a good Berkey filter here and I boil that water. Uh, I might add some herbs and drink it throughout the day. Yeah, so make sure you're drinking enough hot liquids at this time. Um, it'll help the throat, it'll definitely help the lungs and uh, support the kidneys and liver function. Okay, so I'm not sure if I answered, uh, you know, the liver question specifically, but um, as I said, it's a supportive movement that increases qi flow and supports also the eyes. And so it's a multifunctioning. Uh, it clears the field, but you know, you're, if you're doing this in front of a tree, as I have here, uh, even, you know, even greater is that possibility of how, how to detox, uh, cleanse and purify uh, to the best of your ability. So it'll happen in stages. Um, I imagine that, you know, when we get to the liver stage, and since you already have that in your first movement uh, from the previous broadcast, you, you can continue to use that movement and see if you feel anything, any relief of pressure on the right side, any clarity coming into the eyes. Okay, so we'll go into that in greater detail once we're in the program. Yeah, thank you for that question. I hope that's helpful. Yeah, I think it was. Thank you. Um, and, and again, we've got a lot of people asking about very specific organs, and uh, I know we can't go into each of those, but uh, let's take a general question. Uh, Danielle is asking, is instant healing possible? Why don't we talk about what are the realistic expectations for doing Qigong? What can we hope for? What kind of results? <laughs> You know, the, Danielle, the, the first thing that I think is key to healing is having uh, the relaxation response. I think that when your body is at peace, that everything comes into more greater balance. So the cortisol and the stress hormones are not racing, uh, flooding, you know, flooding the body with stress hormones. Um, which is not meant to do. And you need that in an emergency, but when it's chronic, for example, weeks or months or longer, um, you start to drain the body. So the first opportunity in Zhang Fu Gong is to create this peaceful balance in the body. Once that starts, once that process begins, then the healing is incremental. 
you, you, we would love to think, all of us, that healing can be instant. And, you know, there are cases of spontaneous healing. And I, I certainly feel that, that, you know, there's always that potential. But we call it a Qigong practice for a reason. Yeah, it's a practice that returns us to peace and inner calm on a daily basis. If we don't practice, we forget to practice, and we get distracted from our practice. I think that you will notice a different quality in your day. Uh, atmospheric quality almost, emotional quality definitely. Uh, mental functioning is just that much more stressed. And so this is very, to me, uh, the true beginning of healing is finding peace in your body. And having, and when you can feel the gratitude for all that your organs do, uh, for all the functioning, that capacity that you have as a human being with these four limbs and this incredible body that, if given the right information, can heal itself. Yeah, so uh, I don't like to pretend that Qigong is going to be an instant quick fix. It's not how it was designed. Uh, it requires your commitment. It requires your dedication. And I would be really curious to see how things go for you week by week. You know, maybe by the seventh, seventh week when you have this form somewhat under your belt. Um, and you continue the practice, you're, you're qu I'm quite sure that you will start to see results. So I don't like to think of it at, as uh, instant like that. It's not, a, it's not going to hide any symptoms. In fact, it will help you to detox layer by layer some of the symptoms that might have arisen through uh, ill health, through stress. Remember that 80% of illness is caused by stress. So what does that mean? If 80% of, of uh, illness is caused by stress and lack of ease or dis-ease, that's fairly manageable. That's something that we can control. Um, there's a lot that we can't control, but stress is a state of mind. And that state of mind imprints on the body. Right? And if it imprints on the body, it's sending all these hormones, and all these signals, all this information into the body. Should I run? Should I, you know, or am I frozen? And then the stagnation will deepen if, you know, you get this chronically. Or should I fight? And if there's something that you can't fight against because um, it's not a visible enemy, right? It's smaller and yet greater than we are. But it is giving us an opportunity to rest. I, I, have, I guess I have to name it. Um, you know, this virus is, is very present, so, you know, we can't be in denial about it. Um, but by acknowledging the greatness of these small things, and how they impact us on a macrocosmic as well as a microcosmic level, as well as a personal level, then we can do something about it. But un until we do that, we, you know, we can't afford to be in denial. Once we face it and we start this exercise, we start to do our Zangfu Gong practice, we start to um, acknowledge our fears and transform those fears into something more productive, uh, something more positive so that we can help ourselves. What are you doing with your time, right? Are you practicing? Are you drinking more water? Uh, are you spending quality time with your family that you might be stuck in a, a little apartment with? Uh, how are you bridging the gaps between what your world was and what it is now, and come to peace with that. Okay, so I return to that thought again and again that we need to come back into balance and uh, inform the body so that it can be at peace. And 
I say that we do that through practice. Uh, if you heal instantly from one program, that would be amazing. Uh, but that's certainly not what I'm promoting here. Yeah. Do your practice. Stay home, stay safe, and practice Qigong. <laughs> Right. All right. Thank you for uh, for explaining that. Uh, now, uh, looking at the clock, we have time for a couple more questions. But before we take those, I want to give a few details about the course. Again, it's called Qigong to Renew and Rejuvenate Whole Body Health. And this is going to be literally a life-changing seven-week course with Daisy and her expert guidance where you'll master deep breathing practices, uh, lymph massage, joint rotations and stretches, uh, uh, things that you can easily apply to your daily life to clear your body's stagnant energy. And the seven-week course takes place on Mondays, noon Pacific, starting Monday, March 30th. And as I mentioned earlier, if you can't join us live, that's absolutely fine. You will not miss the teachings because you will receive audio and video recordings transcripts and all course handouts on your course homepage. We've got one centralized location for everything. Uh, also, I'd like to remind everyone that the Shift Network offers a no risk money back guarantee on all of our courses, giving you a full two weeks until April 13th in this case to make sure that you're happy. We want you to love the class. And as an added option, all participants are welcome to connect in a private Facebook community group so you can connect with one another. Also, everyone who registers receives the Qigong to Renew and Rejuvenate Whole Body Health Bonus Collection. First, you receive a video interview with Daisy Lee, Lorelai Chang, and Mei Naka Nakanishi uh, entitled The Art of Qi, How Qigong Supercharges Creativity in All Aspects of Life. Then you'll get a video dialogue with Daisy and Mark Rule called The Qigong Path. And you'll also receive a video dialogue with John P. Milton and Sharon Rose entitled The Healing Power of Nature, Acknowledging, Integrating, and Liberating the Shadow. And when you register by Midnight Pacific on Wednesday, March 25th, you'll receive this extra gift, and that is the top five video recordings from the Qigong Global, Global Summit of 2019. So before we get back into questions, Daisy, uh, what are you most looking forward to sharing in this, this new upcoming course? Wow. You know, there's so much that I'm excited about with this course. Um, there's movements that help to optimize the function of the organs, but um, more than the, the practice, it's also connecting with the students. I find for me the most rewarding. And so the, the questions or the uh, seeing what the practice does for people and, and usually there's a lot of enthusiasm because of that first impression of what it does inside even in, on, on the first occasion. So that's very exciting to me. Uh, I want to see people get healthy. I want to see people come into a, a place of, of calm in their lives and to appreciate what is happening all around us as well as within us. And so that, um, to me, that's really exciting, you know, to, to be able to support that uh, transformation in students that are ready for this program. So thank you for that question, Lisa. All right. Now, you've answered a lot of questions today about uh, calming and relaxation. There are a lot of people saying specifically that stress is keeping them up all night. Uh, people are having trouble sleeping. Uh, so going beyond relaxation, how can we get to sleep at night when there's just so much going on? Melatonin. No, I'm just I'm kidding. Uh, actually not. Some people can use melatonin if they need it. Um, I really feel, Lisa, that when you have perspective uh, and you start using the techniques like showering chi, where when the body is in calm, you're more relaxed. When you're relaxed, your mind is not so active. When your mind is not so active, things start to, you know, simmer down. And so that's how you will have better sleep. And that's actually one of the, the great, um, you could say, side effects of this program is that your sleep improves. Uh, many people find that they lose a little bit of weight if they need to. 
uh, it's really more like weight balancing. So those that are, you know, have traditionally lost too much, they come into balance. Um, the, these are some of the, the effects, but I would say that one of the greatest things is that peaceful state of mind. Uh, and how, how can you not sleep better if you're at peace? So you're not, your mind is not in overdrive. Your heart is not, you know, fluttering from the stress. And when we can get these things, these functions into balance and have a, a broader perspective, then you're able to sleep better. And uh, I still recommend, uh, since we, I shared this movement, to use showering chi or the sifting movement that you learned at the very beginning to bring more calm into the body. And you might start with a few times, but uh, traditionally it's done at least nine times and slower and slower each time. And you start to feel at least this calming of the frenetic energy within your body. Okay, perfect. Thank you for that. Uh, now, I've got a question from Terry wondering, are there daily practices in the course material? So this might be a good time to, we've only got a few minutes left, but just sort of a, a quick overview of how the class is formatted. Uh, what will they learn? Will each week they'll have something to, to learn that builds on each other? How, how are you working this? Right. Yeah, so um, Lisa and Terry, everyone, the, um, the, the way it's formatted, there's going to be the general overview and uh, a few key movements that you can start with that balance the exterior field immediately. Uh, and from there, we're going to go into the organ pairs, pair by pair. Each week, we go through each of the movements. Um, it's like two movements per week, almost. Uh, occasionally, uh, additional information um, for adding the, the layers that you'll need to support that. And by the seventh week, you'll have the complete form. And that's when we'll do... Uh, the whole form from beginning to end um, more than once so that you start to get it in your body. You'll be able to, since they um, shift, you know, share us all the recordings and you can download them, you'll have them forever. And so you'll be able to practice, uh, get to that stage where you just practice that last one. Okay, so it's a building up of knowledge and your body's potential healing capacity. Yeah, so uh, does that make sense, Lisa? Yes, it does perfectly. <laughs> I was wondering myself, because I'm taking the course as well, and I, I was curious as Yay. well, so perfect. Yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, look, at the time here, this, this has been... Uh, as usual, just a fantastic conversation. Um, we're a little bit out of time here, so I want to go ahead and thank our viewers for being with us today and for all of your questions, because without your questions, Daisy and I would just be having a nice, friendly chat. Uh, so uh, once again, Qigong to renew and rejuvenate. Whole Body Health starts Monday, March 30th. And again, you can visit HealingChiEnergy.com. Again, Chi here is spelled Q-I. You can see it right there on the bottom of the screen. And that's where you can learn more and to register. So before we go, Daisy, do you have any final thoughts for our viewers? Uh, Lisa, only that I'm so looking forward and very excited to have you join me. And uh, so happy that I'll have a chance to support you in this practice. Thank you. And please take care. Stay home, stay safe, and, you know, let's, let's do this together. Much love. See you soon. All right. Thank you again, Daisy. It's been a pleasure speaking with you today. I, I always love spending time with you. Thank you. Likewise. Once again, <laughs> once again, thank you to everyone who joined us today. On behalf of all of us at the Shift Network, I wish you well and look forward to having you on this course or perhaps another one in the future. Have a great day, everyone.